If you are about to buy a new table saw, or if you have one already, but you are intimidated to start using it, then stay tuned as I will show you what you should and should not do when operating this great machine. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Woodworking Beginner's Guide. In the first episode, I will show you the basic techniques that you should know before pressing this green button with confidence and respect. Let's take a quick review about the anatomy of the table saw, just to understand how it operates. Any table saw consists of a table top. This is usually made of cast iron on professional grade saws, such as cabinet and contractor saws, and aluminum on the job side saw to reduce weight and to allow for one person to move the saw if required. These T-tracks are essential on any table saw for mounting the miter gauge that is used to make cross cuts and miter cuts. As you should not make any freehand cuts on the table saw, there is a moving fence to help you cut straight along the wood and that is called rip cutting, where you will be cutting along the wood grain and parallel to the saw blade. This front wheel is used to raise and lower the saw blade as needed. And the side wheel is used to tilt the saw blade to the left and in some saws to the right for bevel cuts. And that is usually somewhere between 0 to 45 degrees. And what 0 means here is a square in reference to the tabletop. The saw blade will always rotate towards the front of the table saw. And behind it, you will find the riving knife that you should not remove unless you are using a dado blade. Many woodworkers don't use the riving knife but I don't recommend doing so, as it can reduce the kickback from happening in many situations. This door will allow you to access the mechanical parts and the motor for maintenance and cleaning. And this door should be always closed whenever the saw is in use, for better dust extraction and safety. Cabinet saw trunnion is usually mounted to the saw cabinet body and not hang off the cast iron table, as it is on the hybrid and contractor saws. This will prevent the top from sagging over time under the weight of the motor and trunnion. This doesn't mean that the contractor and hybrid saws are inferior, but if you are a serious woodworker or a furniture maker who doesn't need to carry his 550 pounds table saw to the job site, then you might consider having a cabinet saw. If you have a habit of dropping off your saw blade when changing it, then here is a tip for you. Just keep one inch or so of saw dust covering the bottom of your table saw cabinet to act as a pillow when receiving the falling blade. This will save you from breaking a tooth on your saw blade. The table saw fence is riding on parallel front and back rails and if calibrated properly will reward you with the accurate cuts every time without the need for any measurement. On some designs, you will find these back hooks where you can hang on the table saw inserts, the standard one and the optional dado insert. Most table saws have this dust extracting adapter where you can fit the dust extracting hose to reduce the amount of dust accumulating inside the saw cabinet. It comes in different sizes from 2 to 4 inches depends on the size of the saw. Table saw is superior for ripping cuts as it cuts clean and square if it is well tuned. When ripping wood, it is recommended to raise the blade until the blade gullets are just above the workpiece surface. This will reduce heat buildup and give the blade the chance to excavate the sawdust produced by the cutting action. Rising the blade more than that will expose more of the blade in the air and will become very dangerous even though it has less chance to cause a kickback as the blade will be pushing the workpiece against the saw table, but still, Accidentally touching the rotating blade will cause the worst injury that can happen on the table saw. Your best table saw friend is your push stick or the gripper. The push stick will help you keep your hands away from the danger zone when ripping narrow pieces like this one. And the gripper will allow you to hold big and small work pieces without direct contact between your hand and the work piece. In most situations, you can use the blade guard for more protection. 
Still, there are some cuts that you cannot make on the table saw with the blade guard installed. Rather than these, I prefer to use it. Like the miter saw, the table saw is great for cutting miters accurately, but that depends on the miter gauge you have. Usually, the aftermarket ones are better than the one that comes with the saw. The miter gauge compass needs to give correct and repeatable readings. However, it is also important to have it fit tight inside the T-track without sides movements. If the workpiece that you are cutting is very long, then you need to consider a circular saw or better a miter saw to do these cross cuts. Do not cut a workpiece like this one using the saw fence as your reference. As if the workpiece length is less than its width, then you have a high risk of the saw blade pulling it from your hand like so and shooting it at you, or worst, pulling your hand toward the rotating saw blade. Instead, you can use the miter gauge or a cross cutting slit to make this cut. You can make the zero clearance insert to help you get cleaner cuts on plywood or any laminated bolts, but also to stop small pieces from slipping between the saw blade and the insert, and to stop unevenly shaped pieces from wedging themselves between the blade and the insert, then shooting them back at you like bullets. Always remember to unplug your saw whenever you want to clean it or changing the saw blade. There is nothing called safety gloves for the table saw. The saw blade can cause serious injuries to your hands with gloves than without. The blade teeth can hook itself to the glove textile and pull your hand to it causing more damage to your hand. When I was starting this channel, I used gloves to handle rough lumber when I was feeding it to the saw, but that is not correct, so please don't do that. You should not rip cut rough lumber on your table saw. The lumber to be ripped on the table saw must be sitting flat against the table saw top. Instead, use the band saw. It is the best tool for this job. You need to use eye protection, hearing protection, and a dust mask whenever you are using your table saw. The dust mask becomes a must when you are cutting plywood and MDF, as these boards contain some kind of epoxy that will be turned into dust when you cut these boards. Trust me, you don't need to inhale that stuff. You should always keep your leg nearby the stop switch when using the table saw, and the first thing you should do when finishing up a cut is to kick off this big red button. Even before removing your hands of the workpiece you just finished cutting. This is a bonus tip for this episode. Get some candle wax and spread some on your table saw top and on the fence and enjoy silk like wood movement on your table saw. In the end, I hope that the information I shared with you in this episode will help you start a safe and joyful woodworking journey. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and happy woodworking.